Energy Plus to model the effects of daylighting. And Energy Plus has a, a rudimentary method of doing this. It's not uh, the most um, accurate way of going about this, but it's better than nothing. And I want to show you how to do it um, using a little trick I've devised here. So here I've got my Worcester Room 214 model, and I'm going to um, show this in sections so you can see what's going on inside. You can see that there's windows on the west and on the north, and here there's a square on the ground. And that square is actually a shading device that came with the template file. You probably still have that if you haven't erased it. And just to show you what it is, it's a shading group, and if I go inside that shading group, you can see that it's called a daylight sensor. It's not really a daylight sensor. It's really a shade. But I'm using this shade in order to give me the coordinates of where a daylight sensor would make sense in the zone. So let me explain that. The, um, the purpose of a daylight sensor is to uh, read the amount of light that's falling in a given area and to dim the electric lights accordingly. So if the electric lights are delivering 300 lux or 30 foot candles, but that sensor sees that there's already 15 foot candles or 150 lux, then it knows that they can dim those lights by 50% and get um, an equivalent of 300 lux. And that uh, sensor, depending on the control system, can dim uh, proportionally. So 150 lux would be 50% and um, 30 lux would be 90%. Or it can dim as a stepped uh, dim. But in this case, we're going to just look at continuous dimming. So basically, what's happening is the electric lights would be dimming uh, continuously with the amount of daylight that's coming into the zone. Now, the trick here is that you want the daylight sensor to be towards the darkest part of the zone um, that is being uh, dimmed. So in other words, over here by the window, I can uh, have my sensor be over there by the window. I'm just, just going to drag it over here. But then this sensor is going to pick up some high reading, and this part of the room in the back is going to be relatively dark. So when uh, this sensor picks up those readings, it's going to dim all of the lights, not just the lights right here, but all the lights for the entire room or the entire zone. And uh, that would mean that the area back here would be really pretty dark. So in order to add it, accurately model the effects of daylight dimming in this zone, I'm going to position this sensor in the darkest portion of the zone that I feel would still get daylight. So I can actually back it up all the way over to here and move it maybe even to this corner and still uh, and and try to account for all of the dimming uh, for the entire zone. Some of you may have some zones that are much larger than this, in which case you might want to break it down so that the daylight sensor is only controlling, say, a third or a quarter of the lights in that zone. And you'll see what I mean in a second when we look at the IDF file. So for right now, I'm going to um, position my sensor in this corner and I'm going to save this file as 01daylighting.idf. And I'm going to open this in the IDF editor. So here I've got it open in the IDF editor. And I'm going to go down, press Control L to collapse the classes, and go all the way down to daylighting controls and daylighting reference points. Let's start with daylighting reference points. In this object, the way this works, is it just asks you to define the coordinates of a daylight sensor. So in this case, I need to pick the x and the y coordinates. Now, the way that we're going to do this is by using that shading object that I defined earlier. So inside shading object, you'll see, since we named it daylight sensor, we'll be able to find it. Um, and it's got all these different coordinates for the x and the y. This is for each vertex. And since it's a small square, if I go back to the SketchUp, you see this square is 
I think, um, yeah, two feet on a side. Um, I'm not going to worry so much about which vertex I pick. Um, I'm just going to pick the first one. So this is minus 75 in the x coordinate. 25 in the y coordinate and 5.5 in the z coordinate. This plus 0, 1 signifies scientific notation, so you move the decimal point over 1. Um, hence, minus 75, 25, and 5.5. That's important when you round. You want to make sure that you're rounding so that the sensor is inside the zone. If the sensor is outside the zone, it will not work because it's not seeing the daylight inside the zone. So in this case, I don't have to worry about rounding my 75 or my 25, but my 5.5 is on the floor of the zone. So I want to make sure that the sensor is just slightly above the zone or above the floor. So I might, uh, I'll, I'll record this as 5.51. So back in daylight reference point, this is where I want to input those numbers, minus 75 plus 25 and plus 5.5, 5 and I'm going to add a 1 there, so it's just slightly above the floor. Good, so that's our reference point or our sensor point. Now we can go into daylighting controls and turn that sensor on. By default, you'll see the availability schedule is always 0 or always off. Uh, it's always going to multiply the schedule by 0, so you'll get 0. If we turn it on to always 1, now the daylight control will be on. Uh, so um, just to go through this, the name is daylight control, the zone is our zone, the daylighting method is the split flux method, which is not very um, accurate. Um, so be aware of that. It tends to overestimate uh, the amount of light that you have. The schedule I've got is always on. The lighting control type is continuous. This means that it's dimming continuously. The minimum input power fraction is 10% or 0.1. Um, and the minimum light output fraction is 0.1. So that means that the lights will never dim below 10% uh, unless they go to off. Then um, I'm going to skip some of these. This one you should know about um, the glare index. Uh, this engine has the ability to look at glare as a, a predictor of when people would have lights on or off. In this case, it's so unreliable uh, that I tend to ignore it completely. And so um, this is set, but you'll see that when you, um, when you look at your errors, you will get an error that says that the glare is outside of a uh, reasonable index. That's fine. It's going to just ignore that. And then finally, the daylight reference point, which is um, our sensor, and these two very important parameters. One, this one, is the fraction of the zone controlled by that point. So right now it's set to 100%. And the second is the illuminance set point at that point. So um, in this case, I'm setting this to 100 lux, which is a good rule of thumb. Uh, usually either 100 lux or 300 lux is um, an appropriate set point for uh, rudimentary calculations. You can refer to sun, wind, and light for some references for what some typical illuminance um, set points would be for different uses. And later in the semester, we're going, you're going to be measuring illuminance yourself to decide what an appropriate set point would be. Now, coming back to this fraction of the zone controlled by the reference point, this gives you the ability to, um, coming back to our SketchUp model here, uh, to say how much of the zone is controlled by that sensor point. So in my case here, um, I would want all of the lights in the computer lab to be controlled by that sensor point because it's in the back of the lab. But another strategy would be for me to say, well, I know I'm not going to get very much daylight back here. So perhaps I could get a more reasonable amount of light by moving this more towards the center of the room and now saying that only 50% of my lights are going to be controlled by this sensor. So from this point towards the glazing is going to be controlled by the sensor 
from this point to the wall would not be controlled by the sensor, meaning these guys would be on according to the schedule, and these guys would be on according to the schedule and further uh, limited by the amount of daylight that's available. So if I wanted to do this scenario, I would go back and I change the fraction of the zone to 0.5 or 50%. And I'd have to move the reference point for my daylight sensor located here. Now, once you've defined the controls and reference point for the sensor, save the file and run it. And after you run it, make sure to check the errors carefully. You'll notice that you do get this error, no glare calculation daylighting reference point name provided for object name daylight control. And this is because this is on purpose. We don't want to perform this glare calculation because it's so inaccurate. So um, with that, then open up your variables file. You'll notice without even pasting this into your dashboard that there is this um, variable here called daylight control daylighting reference point, and it gives the illuminance levels in lux for that reference point throughout the year. So this is starting at, at uh, 1 a.m., 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. At 8 a.m., the sun has come up, and you notice that those levels are getting higher and higher through the day, and then back down again, and then on to the next day. Now, you can also notice that along with that, your lights should be dimming. Now, it's a little bit hard to see in this um, visualization, so, or it's not a visualization, in this list of data. So we're going to visualize it. So I'm going to copy and paste this into my dashboard in variables. And um, there's a few different ways you can look at it. You can go to the year um, dashboard and see, uh, look at the lighting energy use. This is probably uh, the easiest way to make sure that it's running correctly. And you'll see, you should see a pattern of, of smaller dots in the middle of the day and larger dots around the perimeter here. This, of course, depends on your actual schedule. So in this, um, this schedule that I've got set up, it uh, looks like there's some lights on overnight, and then at 7 a.m., someone comes on and turns on all the lights, and then by 8 a.m., the sun is up, and we're getting uh, some pretty good illuminance. Then by about 4 p.m., we're not getting enough illuminance, and here at 5, 6, 7, 8 p.m., we're using a lot of electric lighting energy. By 9 p.m., the lights are off or in um, evening mode. So not on, not on as much. You'll also notice that there are these assorted dots throughout uh, that look like they're, they might be cloudy days or uh, cloudy mornings at least, where we're getting less illuminance and so the lights have to be on more. Another way to look at that this is in the week graphs. Uh, so if you page over here to the right, you'll see that there is a graph called lighting energy relative to daylight. And you can see the blue graph here is the lighting power. The gray is the sensor illuminance. And the black is a 2% daylight factor, which is a theoretical value what, um, if you had 2% of the available daylight inside the zone. Uh, this is a common value for um, a well-daylit space is a 2% daylight factor. So this gives you a sense of how bright uh, the a well daylight room is compared to what your room is or where your sensor is placed at least. In this case, our sensor is placed way in the back of the room, back, um, back here. And so there isn't all that much um, daylight getting back there. However, it's enough. So once the sensor illuminance gets above 100 lux, you can see on this side, um, then the electric lights start to dim down, and you can see that they're not using very much power at this time. Um, and remember that they're set to either use 0 or 10%, and then dim continuously from 10%. So 
there's um, this is probably 10% of their total power, which is way up here. After the sun sets, the, the lighting power goes way up again. So I hope you can read this graph and understand when exactly the daylighting is kicking in and how effective it is.